Ah, what's up, boy? Whoa, 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 chill out, chill out, chill out. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video today. We're gonna be installing the headers on my 2020 Corvette. If you guys are new here, thank you for stopping by and watching. Hey, you gonna help install or what? Or are you just gonna eat the box? All right, so there they are. Got the directions. And we will be using everyone recommended to reuse the factory um, header gasket. So we'll do that. G everyone said the GM one's better. And these are the high flows before they get eaten. About to move all the cars real quick and we'll pick this back up as soon as we get started. I'm about to do the last official cold start on my 2020 Corvette. Hopefully in a few hours, it's gonna be a lot louder. So we're just getting started right now, trying to get the trunk and everything out, pulling all this plastic, all these little clips out. We're gonna go little by little, take our time, get to it soon, we got all the tools. This is Brian, everyone, he's helping me. Hopefully we're not missing any bolts in there. <laughs> a few people told me that when they were taking stuff off, a lot of places were missing bolts. Really? But we'll see. So this is the green bolt on the transmission that if you take off, it's gonna ruin your trans. The air intake box is huge. I was trying to find another filter for it. They didn't even make them yet. Like put like a cane in or something. Right. So the air box is out. It's a lot of clips, guys. An excessive amount. Jim should have made that a little easier for us, but it's no big deal. Got that out. Um, we're gonna try to do it uh, without taking the bumper off. We're gonna disconnect all the stuff right here, and then we're gonna take these bars out, get them out of the way. So then we're, next will be the heat shields, and just try to pull everything out from there. Those cats look huge compared to these. They're about to foil a whole lot better. It's gonna look nice in the car. Just got the heat shields off. They're right here. They're actually pretty light. I was expecting them to be heavier, but they got the, like the pretty much that heat shield blanket that everyone else has been running on them. I'm not gonna be running them on mine now. We'll find out if I do need them for the cats or whatever. We'll throw them on later down the road. They look like it's it real bunched up right here where the sensor meets. You would think you'd have a bigger chamber. Yeah, compare that to this. <laughs> this one's gonna flow. So we're on this side, mainly got everything off. There's one or two bolts, Brian, giving you trouble at the bottom. Two. There's two. We didn't want to pull the wheel well liner out. We're trying to just do it from the back, see if it's possible. If we have to pull more stuff, we will. As of now, we're trying to take one of the cats off to loosen it up a little bit. Maybe the bolt is real tight because of that. And those are super tight also too, so. Trying to get it piece by piece. So far, so good. Take a look at this. We noticed this one bolt, I don't know, if anyone from GM is gonna see this, but maybe they're torquing them on way too tight because that is, that's bent. It's very noticeable, that's that's bent. And this one snapped right off. I guess that's why they uh, came with new hardware. So, good thing they sent them because we would be out of luck. When they said 300 bolts, they're probably not lying and we didn't even take, take the fender liner out or we didn't even take the bumper off yet. And pile there, pile there, those little tabs. All of them will pretty much be going back on the car. All these two, so I mean, and then it would be all these, all the way through there. And then if we took the fender liner out too, that would be a whole lot more, so. It's a good chunk. It's been a good bit. So one of the cats are out. Gonna take one of the new cats. Gonna weigh them versus the old cat and show you up close. Stock versus the new high flows. This is I would have to say probably like 20 plus pounds and looks super restricted but we're gonna put on the scale and find out right now 17.2 pounds factory stock cat aftermarket this cat is too small so it's not gonna read so I'm just gonna place it down it was reading 6.6 .6 every time and then it goes away just because it's not big enough It's around 6.4 to 6.6 .6 pounds. So solid 11 pound difference roughly. And the size, and this one's gonna flow a lot better. So that's pretty good. So total 22 pounds difference from the cats. And then got the headers too, already out. 12.6 pounds is reading for the stock headers. 11.6. It's close, pound difference. 
maybe a little bit more. So yeah, so it's a total of, I would say 24 to 25 pound weight loss from stock to using LTH. So recommend it guys, click the link in the bio, go get yourself some headers, hook them up, tell them I sent you and uh, maybe do some more exhaust for my next cars in the future with them. All right, so now we are working on the right side of the car at the moment. Yet again, we're still having trouble with the bolts. They are specced on way too tight. We're trying to get this cat um, the bolts out on the back. Some are just coming off like butter and then some are just keep snapping like I mentioned previously before. I don't want to film the rest of the taking apart on that side because I already got the other side in. So pick it up once we're putting them in the car. So take a look. Everything's out of the car right now for the most part. So I'm going to compare the stock versus the new stuff. Steve's going to help me out and grab the camera so I can show all the measurements. Yeah, Steve's got to help me because I don't think I can measure and hold everything. See the collector, it's roughly at three inches, like very close to three. And the stock, it gets real small and then winds up at the end. So from there to there, it's like two, two and a half, I would say. This is pretty much almost three inch. That's two and a half from stock. And we can take a look at the cats. These are the new cats that will be going on the car right at almost three inches. The welds here are just a little bulky. These things are just, they're, they're a boat. They're super heavy. Really can't see through them at all. They're fully flopped. Well, there's just a little dot of light. It's gotta have a little bit of flow. Everything in total is probably a 25 pound weight loss between cats and headers only. 25 pounds, nothing noticeable. But if we add, I don't know how much the tires were, so probably dropped around 35 pounds, 30 to 40 pounds, you could say, roughly with everything. If I did the stop, if I put those aftermarket fronts up there, it would even be more weight, so maybe it'd be close to around 50 pounds total. Looks kind of weird with everything out. There's a lot of space in there. Definitely room for some turbos, maybe in the future. I don't know, hopefully. It's kind of weird where they put the exhaust, um, the hangers, they're bolted right up to the transmission because this car is the way they do it. We had to take this one out right there. So far, looking pretty good. I've been trying to help out as much as I can. Um, never taken anything apart of this caliber. Um, Brian, he's been a super good tech for me. He's been helping me out a lot. Met him through Oarsman Chevrolet and he does a lot of work on the Corvette. So if you guys need anything work done on the side, exhaust, engine, like pretty much anything he can do. He's, he's been in Texas. He's built, worked on some very high horsepower Corvettes. He definitely knows what he's doing. He did forget one tool. He had to run all the way back to the shop and go get it. It's this one little tool just to take these um, sensors off and it has to be a certain one. I don't know. Never had to take them off before, but it's all right. He brought everything else but I didn't have that one tool we needed. So it's all good. Quick little drive back, get that, be no problem. Then we're gonna start throwing everything back on the car and we're gonna pick it up right from there. So stay tuned, boys. So we're putting the headers in the car right now. Which gasket was on each side? I think this one was. That one's on this side. Yeah. That's pretty cool. You hold it and slide it down in there from the top. The old days, they never did that shit. Just this piece they give you and they were like, as hell. Cardboard. If you broke that, well, the C7's cool because it's got a slot right here huh? on the ends. So you just put it in and start two bolts and then slip it in and it holds itself. And then what you the the Dude, back in the day was not like <laughs> no. that. We used to have to no. silicone that. And then if you missed it, it didn't line up, it would blow the gasket. You're like, oh man. Everything's back on for the most part. Just the um, trunk stuff has to be buttoned up and the intake has to go back on. But for the most part, everything went flawless on the car. The clearances are perfect. I mean, I cannot complain. We got this job done roughly in five and a half to six hours. The bumper did not have to come off. All this plastic up here did not have to come off. Just took those bars off and the intake and stuff out and we were able to reach everything. Nothing had to be cut. We just had to hammer one of these bolts out that was bent. You guys did see that. Maybe we'll do a cat back too later in the future. 
these tips definitely gotta go, so they're, they will be changed in the future. I, I cannot rock that. You gotta go. We just gotta get the trunks. I wanna hear this thing. I wanna hear it too. It'll I'm, be interesting. I've been out here since like eight o'clock. Well, you're more excited than I am, but I think this is gonna have a little bit more lope, and I think it's gonna be a little bit more of an aggressive tone for sure. Yeah. So. We're so close, but so far. Let's get it done. Come on, let's get it. We are complete. Air box is in. Headers, everything's good to go. Um, we're not putting the, tr uh, the like the whatever you want to call this little cargo trunk thing in just yet. We're gonna start the car, fire it up right now, make sure it's 100% ready to go. So, let's get it. Checking everything right now. <laughs> Thank God. Why do you have to say that? Valve's not open, you dunce. <laughs> I, I don't know. I put it this morning. I put it in support just for the simple fact we did this. Probably when we, when we disconnected everything, it probably re maybe reset it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So yeah, that was a cold start with the valves shut. Yeah, pretty cold over the valves. Twenty five hundred RPM. That sounds a whole hell of a lot better. Imagine sixty five hundred. Ah, uh, it's gonna be screaming. We need to go for this. Let's go for it. Let's finish it up. Come on. Well, as soon as we finish and button everything up. It starts raining because I live in a state called Maryland and it hates me and it likes to rain. Um, it was sunny about 20 minutes ago, beautiful weather, and now it's raining. So, and now it's pouring, as you can just hear it pick up because I'm talking about it. But yeah, hopefully maybe it'll dry up and we can take it for a little ride tonight. Um, we'll save that for another video though, but hope you guys enjoyed that, um, that little build. And just remember, you don't have to jack the car up, you don't have to take the wheel well liner off, you don't have to take the bumper off. It wasn't really necessary. You can if you want to. Uh, be my guest, just a lot of extra work. This was considered a 10 hour job, but we got it done like five and a half, six hours, consistently working with a couple bolts giving us trouble. But uh, other than that, that's it. Make sure you like, subscribe. I'm out. <laughs>